what is your main takeaway? Well, I think it does two things. Uh, the first thing it does is address what was a fairly narrow question, that being, can a state introduce into its uh, application criteria for gun carry permits anything other uh, than general objective rules? In other words, can a state say that an applicant needs to determine need as determined by a, a police officer uh, or a uh, judge officer of the state yeah. or a judge um, or can uh, a state only impose uh, regulations that affect everyone equally you know for example are you a felon uh, have you been convicted of domestic violence are you uh, subject to a mental health um, order uh, and the court came down and said you have if you're going to um, uh, have a permitting system you know many states don't I think 25 states don't but if you're going to have a permitting system then you have to apply uh, those permits uh, evenly uh, but the second thing it did which got I, I think slightly less attention but in the long run is really going to matter is it cleared up a lot of the loose ends from Heller uh, and it did so responsively because a lot of the lower courts have proceeded since 2008 and 2010 with McDonald as if Heller never happened uh, they found ways to get around it. Uh, Heller didn't, for example, uh, put a uh, level of scrutiny uh, in its ruling. Um, so courts have made up their own. Um, and what Thomas says in his majority opinion is, this is not an intermediate scrutiny right. This can't be treated differently than any other right. And the only thing you're allowed to look at is, is the text and the history. Yeah, which I agree with you is, is going to be the much bigger impact here out of this ruling. Certainly, uh, simply striking down New York's May issue, uh, as it's called, uh, gun permitting law for concealed carry is significant because it impacts the remaining uh, seven or eight. Uh, you know, my count was eight. The court's count is seven for some reason. I'd have to look into which state they're not including. But uh, those states are actually fairly large states, though. New York, California, uh, Massachusetts, uh, New Jersey. So that covers about 25% of the, the country's population. So it's it, even just that part is significant. But the new standard, or, or I guess clarifying the standard for how to decide Second Amendment cases moving forward, is obviously going to impact a lot more because it'll, it'll be relevant in basically every gun case uh, from here on out at the federal level, right? Yeah. Uh, and and also uh, long before those cases get to the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. uh, which is the key, because you know Supreme Court cases are rare. Most of these issues will be litigated in the lower courts. And what Thomas did w with the uh, five other justices in the majority opinion is give pretty clear instructions as to how those lower courts have to proceed going forward. Now he greatly irritated Justice Breyer in the process. But he, he did so on the back of a phrase we've heard a great deal from Clarence Thomas. That is that the Second Amendment is not a second class right. He's been saying this uh, for years when dissenting uh, in the court's decisions not to take big gun cases. Uh, he thinks that its inability or unwillingness to take gun cases has relegated the Second Amendment to a second class right. Now here what he's saying is, well, now we've taken this case, we're not going to allow it to be treated as a second class right either in this court or anywhere else. And he says in the opinion, look, we don't have a system where only some people get to take advantage of the First Amendment. We don't have a system where only some people um, have their privacy rights upheld. We don't have a system in which only some people get a trial by jury. And we can't have that uh, in the Second Amendment either. Uh, and and he, he's he's not inventing anything new there. What, what he's doing is complaining that the Heller decision did not put enough meat on the bone to preempt the lower courts into treating the Second Amendment as the right that the Heller decision correctly confirmed it to be. Right. Yeah. And here, here's a quote directly from the majority opinion from, from Justice Thomas. He says, the constitutional right to bear arms in public for self-defense is not a second class right subject to an entirely different body of rules than other Bill of Rights guarantees. We know of no other constitutional right that an individual may exercise only after demonstrating to the government officials some special need. And so, you know, that, that 
I think that sums up the New York case uh, pretty well, because the whole idea of may issue laws is that not only do you have to pass the background check and the training requirements, but you also have to show that you have some sort of specialized uh, good reason to need to carry a gun. Uh, and usually in most states with that rule, uh, that means you have to have some sort of very specific threat against your right life. You have to right. have a stalker or some sort of training. But it, it, it's and in also, some places, it, it's just a, a total fig leaf like Hawaii, where they don't issue any gun carry permits. Not a single person in the state, I guess, apparently has a special need to carry. Right. And, and there's actually a footnote in the decision that is interesting that says that the court is not in any way questioning the capacity of a state uh and it points to the it says 43 states that have shall issue systems that it's not questioning the ability of a state to for example have a permitting process put a training requirement in or what you will but it does say that if the permitting system is used cynically if it's used to delay concealed carry or open carry, if it's used as a prohibition mechanism, if it's used to treat people differently, then there can be a constitutional challenge on those grounds. Um, and I think it's worth our saying here that, in a sense, this isn't just a, a Second Amendment question. I mean, the specific issue here is the Second Amendment as incorporated um, via the 14th Amendment. But this is also an equal protection question. You know, we don't have a system in the United States where people can be treated subjectively differently under the law. That has been illegal, thankfully, for a very long time. And that's what New York's doing here. Anything objective is presumptively constitutional under this decision. If they say you have to fire 50 rounds before we'll give you a permit, if you have to take an NRA training course, um, you can't have a felony conviction, you have to be over 21. You have to have a permanent address. You know, objective criteria, those are fine. And you probably will see some states now that will implement, you know, pretty tough training requirements, say 16-hour classes and that yeah. sort of thing. What they can't do is create any system in which there is a subjective determination made by an officer of the government that could be made differently by another one, where Officer A says, I don't think you need it, but Officer B might say, well, I think you might need it. You know, that is obviously not the case with felony convictions or certificates or that sort of thing. Um, and I think that's a really good step for American law under equal protection grounds, leaving aside the question of the Second Amendment. 